welcome to Impact Wrestling. Now, I got a lot. Guys, this is the fourth time I've done this video because I'm so, uh, I'm so hype. I'm hype. I've become almost anxious. I've anxious myself. You know how I got anxiety. I kind of gave myself a little bit more anxiety to know because I'm so anxious, so hype for what I got to say at the end of this review. So hold on. I'm going to go through everything as quickly as possible because I want to talk about the ending of this show. So bad. I could talk about it but now, but no, 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 no. And if a botch, my words, sorry for anyone who's seen me. Okay, Tasha versus Jazz. Not a bad match. Jazz didn't look too bad. Now, I know a lot of people are not too fond of Jazz. I'm, I'm sure a few people are not fond of Jazz being in the ring. Because these are older wrestlers we should be spotlighting. Spot. It angers me that... A lot of people are saying, I can't stand seeing these rejects or wannabes. Why are you going there? The only time where they're a pain in the ass, older wrestlers from whatever promotion you see, is when the booker makes them a priority. Okay? Other than that, it doesn't matter. They're just wrestlers. Many cases, if they're booked properly by the right type of writers, they're fine. At this moment in time, Jazz is not the general spotlight. Neither is ODB or... Oh. How can I say this? Right now, as it stands for the women's division, no matter if it's the knockouts division or the knockouts tag division, it's bad. I'm sorry. Dana Perrazzo has no talent to work with. She's gone through everyone. Well, except for Jazz or ODB. And Sue, Susan... Because she's gone through Sue, which means she's gone through Susan. And it means she's gone through Susie. It, it, there's no one there. And it doesn't make a difference. They're an explosion. They're not on the main show. So the problem here is that they have a lack of talent on their roster. Bringing back ODB is not the problem. Bringing back Jazz isn't the problem. The problem is they don't have enough women to fill in the division. And now we're going to get Jordan Grace and Jazz versus Tasha as well as Kira, the sexy lesbian. I know she's a lesbian. I still love her. Yeah, she wouldn't want my ass in a day after Thanksgiving. But still, I just said that because I didn't know what else to say. <laughs> but you get my point. Look, it's just the way it is right now. And, I, and when you see the situation with this match, it was fine. Jazz actually performed pretty damn well. Yes, she's a slower older wrestler, but doesn't mean her ring work is bad. Yes, she's a bit slower, but doesn't mean she can't get it done, and she did win the match. Fine. All right. Now, let's jump straight into the women's match of ODB and Susan. Susan. Well, no, sorry, not Susan. Suzanne. You got Sue, Susie, and Suzanne, and I'm waiting for Su Susanna, a sexy Susanna, whatever type uh, you want to just call her the sexy beastess. I want to see her turn into a seductress. I want to see Sue turn into a seductress. That's what I'm waiting for if they go there. Like Dude Love of McFoley, he had four personas. McFoley, Mankind, and you had Cactus Jack. I really like Cactus Jack. He was just a nut. And then you had Dude Love. I'm waiting for number four. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking for. But when you look at ODB versus Susan, Suzanne, is it Susan or Suzanne? I can't remember. It was okay. And we got this scene in our face of Suzanne. Boobs. Look, I love Sue Young. She's a great wrestler. And she's been selling each of her new persons. I want to see the last one of her being seductive, sexy, desirable. Coming out in sexy dresses, showing a lot of cleavage, but then when you think she won't do anything to you, she will kick your face in. That's what I'm waiting for. Because eventually, once she hits there, she can revert back to Su Young, the undead bride herself. That's what I'm hoping they're going to go there. But we really had not much with this situation. It was just a spotlight was going to happen a sacrifice. Because after the match was over in ODB 1... Because pretty much Susan basically poured out ODB's liquor. She got mad. 
she whooped her ass. And that was the end of it. And then everybody and their mom came out. It, well, almost everybody. You didn't have Rosemary come out. You didn't have Tennille Dashwood come out. You didn't have Alyssa come out. But still, that's pretty much everyone in the division. They want the spotlight. So this is what you got. Now, we had... Hmm, I should get this over with right now. Raju and Shira versus Storm and Saban. I'm not even going to talk about the match. The match really wasn't the key here. This is about two different storylines. First one, about Shira. Now supposedly breaking away from Raju. Look, I notice a lot of people who think Shira can't wrestle. He can't talk. He can't hold a promo. Look, I'll say this 100%. He's never been booked right. Now, mind you, saying this now and listen to my words. Yes, it's also on the talent, counting on how much they're willing to contribute to make their character work. Yes, but as Paul Heyman has demonstrated, even the most boring wrestler can be made exciting if you accentuate the positives and hide the negatives. And I'm sure someone will say, he doesn't have any. Well, how can you know that if he's never been booked to show them? He is typecast. That's what I was thinking about in the last couple of videos. I've been trying to do this because I'm so, I'm so hype. Really, really. You will understand why I botched this, most of this review because I'm so hype for what happened at the end of this, of this show. You will understand. But he has been typecast to stay exactly as he is because he's been coming to Impact Wrestling for years and he has not changed. He's been the same way. Not because he wants to be the same way, I'm sure. He wants to probably change his character a little bit, but the booking is the same. They don't change his booking. No matter how you book Shira, he's still stuck as he is. And I blame Creative for that. And as I said before, Creative sucks. It's not 100% perfect. So this is just me saying it. Now, you get Diener coming out of, the, out of the room after Joe as well as Eric Young pretty much checking in on him. And the monologue of Eric Young gets disturbed because he's pretty much saying, look, you have to be beaten. This is how we stay pure. If you don't, the disease will come back. And as he's monologuing, you get James Storm. You get the Saban. And they won their match happily. And they think maybe they can help Eli. Not, not Eric, e Eli Drake, but EY. Sorry. I'm so hype. But they're trying to talk to him saying, this isn't you. What are you doing? This is not the way we know you. This is not how you get anywhere. And guess what? They get their asses whooped. And Storm's man, he says, we're, we're done with you now. We've known you for 20 years. They have known each other for 20 years since the time, well, well, well before a little bit of Impact Wrestling being known as TNA. He says, we're coming for you. We're going for your boys and then we're coming to take your face off. We're not going to do the motor cinema machine gun thing. We're not going to do try. Sorry for your, for your damn luck. We're just going to whoop your ass. That's basic what Storm said. That's it. Is it a good story? Honestly, I wish they had a couple of weeks build up. I wish they had approached him maybe one or two weeks in advance. And then this situation happened where Dina loses. And then they approach him to say, you see, this is not working. Go back to where you were and then get the asses whooped. And then they had it. At least then it would feel a little better than it being rushed within the last few days of sacrifice. The, the Impact Plus show. That's just me. You guys tell me below. Now. We got Trey and Sam. Sam who came from the training center that Trey goes to himself. And Trey is going, what, what, what happened last week when Sammy got there? He says, look, he didn't do anything. Not to me. He just talked to me. He talked to me about you. And he said, you got issues, man. He said, I should challenge you to a, a match. And he says, I'm not doing that. The guy's scum. He's dangerous. He says, he said you would say that. He also said that you got no guts. And you'll never be able to handle me. And he says, fine. And then they have the match. And Trey whoops the ass of one of the trainees at his performance center equivalent. 
Then Sammy lovingly turns the lights out. First introduces Sam. The match is done. Then he turns the lights out again. Gets into the ring with Sam who's already been beaten. And then pile drives his ass. Ends him. And Trey is begging him not to before it happens. This. Look. I don't know where they're going with Trey dealing with Sammy. Sammy is trying to put him over as an individual wrestler, which is good. But they better have something for Trey. That's the exhibition. He's got to win the exhibition title eventually. Or Sammy has to win the exhibition title eventually. Because right now they're floating. If you think this is a great feud, more power to you. But let's be honest. What did Trey do before this? Next to facing off... Uh, hey. They're my face. And that's just Sam and Trey. I just got to show you because, yes, Trey had a feud with Ace Austin and it got him nowhere. He always lost to Ace. Yet in a cinematic, he won, but in actual matches, he lost singles. He never got anywhere. So either he's going to eventually win the X Division title, which he should. Or Sammy, who has literally bent his ass over and allowed Impact Wrestling to stick a stick up its ass to help anyone that needs to be helped. And he's gotten nowhere. He's floating. It is time for him to do something. Let him go into the X Division and win the damn title. That's the best other option you can get next to him trying to get the world title back. Which I got a lot to talk about. Now, we got the contract signing of the Good Brothers and Finn Juice. You got Scott there. He's got the papers there. They got the liquor there. And they want to drink before this begins. And he says, you know what? And this is Scott. He says, I don't want to be here because I know how this is going to end. Just sign the damn papers, please. Both sides drink once. Both sides drink twice. The third drink, only the Good Brothers drink. And pretty much Finn Juice throw the liquor in their faces and they just break out into a fight. Because Finn Juice does not want to be considered here by Good Brothers. Because they're considered the little boys. They want to be here. This is what it's all about. And I kind of wish they had more time to develop this than just leaving it like this right now. It is so short and rushed. But it is what it is, is what we're stuck with. I just wish they'd given this more to develop, at least more than a, two months to really build up into this. But it's just me, you guys, from below. The match of the night, Ace Austin versus Chris Bay. Now, I'm sure many people are not going to be thinking this is the match of the night. They'll think it's not very good due to the fact of how things went. But... I think it was because it was a little bit of old school wrestling. They first started out with chain wrestling, which you don't normally see Chris Bay do. And you don't normally see Ace do. They don't. They, they, you don't normally see Chris or Ace do it often. It's rare. So at first they were doing it and then they expanded outwardly going into aerial. It was a long match. It got tired. It got tanked. And at that time, you got Madman Fulton at... Sitting not close to the ring in a chair does not interfere whatsoever because Ace doesn't want to have any interference because he wants to prove that he's the best. There'll be no controversy. Which, almost. In the end, Ace lost. And it's due to the fact of TJP being up at the ramp, watching to distract Ace, and Ace lost to the ultimate, fin well, the smooth criminal, the ultimate finesse of Chris Bay. I really thought that they were going to put Chris Bay in, make it like a three-way, but still keeping it as it is, okay. All right? It's cool. But eventually, Chris Bay's got to be doing something because the guy is way too talented of a wrestler as well as a talker. The guy can talk his ass off. He has charisma and talent. And if he does see this, Mr. Bay, how you doing, man? I still believe you should be the smooth criminal because you do steal Anything you want, but I do believe that and hope that they will push you because, come on, you got the talent, you got the charisma, it goes well. Now, I'm just saying. Now, um, Swingers Palace, and this, do, this does go with what happened between uh, 
Chris Bay and Ace Austin. Not bad. When it came to Josh Alexander facing off a of TJP saying when that's all settled and you protect your stuff, me and you are not done yet. So you wonder if the TJP might be turning a little bit heelish. I hope so. Because they need more. That's what I'm thinking. I wouldn't mind seeing Chris Bay be a, a rough face. But that's just me, you guys, tell me to blow. Let me see, am I forgetting anything? If I'm forgetting something, I'm sorry. I got, I can't, I can't stand it anymore. I must talk about this because my mind is racing. The end of the show. Look, guys. If anyone has been watching me for a couple of years, you know I've been around for a long time. I started this channel in 2012. Yes, it was because of depressing anxiety, but I also had a passion for wrestling. And I was inspired by some of the channels that had been in existence at the time. Off the Rope Show, which is now Off the Rope Show Central. Central. The British Fist also in, encouraged me. And there was somebody else, I can't remember, it's been so long since I've seen him. But there was another guy that was doing it. And I was inspired enough to actually start doing wrestling reviews. And I've been doing, understand, since July 15th of 2012, I have been doing WWE reviews, which now I've cut it down to just pay-per-views. Now I do AEW reviews. And I got to say, I am going to do NWA power reviews. I am doing them, but I got to figure out the schedule because it may be how it was last time where you got Impact Tuesday, AEW Wednesday, and NWA Thursday. Because I can't do two of them at the same time because NWA comes out in the same time as Impact just an hour before. I can't do it. But I've been doing constantly for nine freaking years Impact reviews. I think there used to be dozens of bigger channels than myself that did Impact reviews. Way bigger than me. And now either they stopped doing Impact reviews and they only focus on NXT before it went bad and now AEW or they're gone. They, they stopped making videos, period. The people used to do it. So I might be one of the few or the last one, the last gunfighter in a sense, that still does Impact Wrestling reviews. I could be the last one other than other channels that have come up after me. If they have been doing it for 10 years or more. A few of them, like I said, look, just Alex. He has been around for 10 years and I know he did Impact Wrestling reviews. He don't do them anymore. The Slug Daddy of Off The Rope Show Central, when he used to do the Off The Rope Show, he barely does any talking of Impact, or he doesn't even talk about it at all. I'm the only one that does it. So, this is your gift. <laughs> Look, you guys know what I'm going to talk about. I said this. Now, everybody else is going to probably be talking about, are, are AEW really going to be crazy enough to do this? Who was the one who first talked about it? You go to their channels and you say, hey, this tiny little YouTuber talked about it first. The only Impact Wrestling reviewer still left from 2012 knew it before anybody else. Just like when it came to Matt Hardy having the broken brilliance thing. No one thought it was going to work. I'm one of the few who did. I knew it before almost anybody else. So this is what you're getting. Now, you got Scott Demore saying he was going to have an announcement. He is called out by Moose because Moose is saying, I want to know what this damn amount... I'm really anxious. <laughs> he wants to know what this damn announcement is. Scott comes out. He calls out Rich. They both come out. And he says simply, you're going to have your match for the Impact title. But due to the fact of the last... He pretty much says, you got great talent. But for nearly a year, you've been holding that damn title that has been in the prop room and you've not earned a damn thing. So I'm sick of seeing the situation with you. So as it stands now, I'm not retracting what I said about your title being active. You can't be, there cannot be two champions. We are now going to have a unification match. It is your title versus Rich title. Whoever wins will be a unifying champion. But it's not over after that. Because at Rebellion, whoever wins at Sacrifice will be going to the main event of Rebellion against the AEW champion, Kenny Omega. What did I say? Tell me if I'm wrong. 
What did I say? I'm sure many Impact fans have been thinking about it themselves, but there are very few that even spoke about it on YouTube. And I might be one of the few, the select few, who realize it has to happen. Look, guys, this has to happen. As I've said for more than a year, Impact is having major problems. They can't get anywhere in the American market. They may be somewhere in international easily, in Europe, probably in Asia, easily, in Africa. I've been hearing it like crazy. In Canada, they're probably very popular, but in America, they just can't get anywhere. They can't get no freaking where, nowhere. This might be it. They're the older company next to New Japan Pro Wrestling. It's New Japan here, Impact is next, and AEW is a little kid, the new kid in the block, as they used to say. This might give AEW a good boost working with an international company. So they'll show their title on AEW television, and that will, for AEW, lure into the international fans if they're not already lured in in Europe, Asia, Mexico, and maybe Africa, because they're going to show it there, along with Canada, of course. But then for Impact Wrestling, if it's spotlighted on TNT television, they're going to say, and I'm sure casual fans would say, whoa, what the hell is this? You got Kenny Omega, an AEW champion, holding another rival company's title? What is this Impact Wrestling? When does it come on? And they got to spotlight it to a certain extent on AEW TV. This is what Impact Wrestling has been desperately needing. Yes, it's going to be on the Impact Plus app, maybe. Yes, it'll probably be on Access TV, of course. And any other network in America that can actually get Impact Wrestling. Like Pluto. Pluto TV could get Impact if you see older episodes. But still, it will give them something they've been desperately needing. Especially when NXT moves to Tuesdays. You got NXT. If Impact does not move, it's going to be its rival. And they are not going to stand a chance. Because Vince laughs at Impact Wrestling or TNA beforehand. But he already just, normally he would just laugh at Impact Wrestling. He would laugh at them because of nothing. They moved around twice and now they're on another network where they probably don't even get as far as Vince is concerned. Not even probably a million fans. But now he got his ass whooped by AEW. A up and comer on a rival network and they got their butts kicked to the point where he had no choice but to order them to move to Tuesdays. Now he's not going to take that very lightly. He's going to be pushing Triple H to do something a lot more serious on his show. Whether it's going to help, it probably won't. But it's going to be, they're going to be throwing a lot at NXT, no matter if it works or not. And that is going to be difficult for Impact Wrestling to deal with. So now they have this. And if he wins, which he should, this can truly give Impact Wrestling a gift they've been desperately needing. But the question is going to be, and I say this again, can Impact right for all that is going on? Are they going to still stay the same way? They need to change up their writing style or they're not going to get very far because this will only be up for a short time and it's going to end. And they'll eventually have to move off their network. But this is just me. Peace.